When the Nazis began their hunting of Jews, most people weren't yet aware of the dangers that this body represented. But quickly, they became more known after they were socially accepted. In the early phases, there were random attacks, random rapes, and of course, small instances of anti-Semitism taking place throughout society. Nobody talked about it. Nowadays, we are seeing some replica in these patterns. We are, yes, watching across all the media, the public parades and the encampments that are taking place on campuses, the horrible violence that is starting to rise in these certain spaces. But what we're not talking about is the undercurrent that is basically pulsing in every society around us. So if we don't talk about it and we don't address it, then how can we conquer it? It's very important for us to not make any equations with the Holocaust to our current reality, even October 7th, although there are certainly similarities and they can be discussed and I've discussed them in various programs. But what we can recognize is that the years before the Holocaust were witness to some of these same behavioral patterns, not only by societies, but by Jews too. The apologetics, the desire for appeasement, the desire to place blame. Who is responsible for this rise of anti-Semitism? Is it the ultra-Orthodox, the Hasidim? Is it the Zionists? Is it the seculars? Because in Mein Kampf, Hitler writes, it is not the Jew in his religious garb and kaftan that is the danger among us but it is the Jew who hides himself, who disguises himself as an Englishman, a Frenchman, a German, and we can add today, an American. Today it's not about hiding who we are. It is instead about finding the identity that helps us to sustain ourselves during this very intense time of transition. The transition is not only that physical expression that is starting to become more prevalent in every society, but it's also the transition that's happening inside of so many people. Suddenly wanting to maybe find God, find a connection, find an understanding that maybe never interested them before. Have you seen how many of these social media influencers of today are really proudly saying October 7th was their wake-up moment. Well, Kristallnacht was a wake-up moment for many Jews, but actually years prior, in 1933, when they started to gather many Jews and non-Jews as well from the streets who posed a threat to the new government of the National Socialist Democratic Workers' Party, they put them into camps, re-education camps. And it wasn't that masses and masses were being killed yet, but they were being terrorized psychologically. And that is something that we can understand today as we continue to be tortured emotionally and mentally by the abuses, not only inflicted by Hamas, but also by every pro-Palestinian or indifferent person anywhere around us. We have to be a little bit more awake and we have to be a little less shocked. We have to think how our survival matters and how we can make small changes to different behaviors that will allow us to create a bigger impact. Whether it's even within our own family or a community or a school or wherever you might be able to be involved. The city council, there are so many opportunities. There's even in the theater and in arts ways that we can be making a difference, reaching the common people with the truth. And that is how we stop the trend. We remind people, do not fall for their tactics. We've all seen this before. Let us remain good honest human beings filled with integrity. And for that reason, we stand together 
with Jews, the Jewish people, and the Jewish right to the Jewish homeland and the Jewish state of Israel. That is the distinction between the then and now. Today we have a Jewish state that will protect us, an army that will defend us, and we must do everything possible to utilize that blessing, that blessing from God and the blessing of these years of our fight for freedom that have been fulfilled in the establishment and the thriving of a Jewish state in the biblical land of Israel. So that can give us hope and that can give your families hope and maybe the one place that we can all continue or start to strengthen ourselves is who are we as Jews in this historic fight? What can we learn from the generations before us and how they fought against Amalek and every enemy that has shown its horrible face, seeking the annihilation of the Jewish people? From Haman to, ha from Haman to Hamas, we will survive. But the way we do it is the strength we will be able to have inside. That identity upheaval is an opportunity. Let's use it and remain stronger together. Israel strong. Am Yisrael Chai. Let us all help our children and help each other. Do a little bit more.